So this pair of uh, results gives us a reason to care about ideals within a ring that are what we call maximal. So we have to figure out what maximal means. Um, and then once we've figured out what maximal means, your task for the hour in your groups will be to tackle these two items. So to figure out why it is that irreducible elements generate maximal ideals, uh, and then why is the quotient of a ring by a maximal ideal, in fact, a field. Um, and just to tie this in with a discussion we just wrapped up, what we're thinking about here, specifically, is, again, the ring of polynomials with rational coefficients. Um, and within that ring, an ideal, which is the principal ideal generated by an irreducible polynomial, P irreducible. And if you think back um, to the last time we looked at quotients of rings, uh, we saw an example where when we took the polynomial ring with rational coefficients and we quotiented by I think it was t squared minus 4 that we used last time, that you found out that this was not a field. Because you found zero divisors, you found things that were not units, and so forth, when you did explicitly the arithmetic within this quotient ring. But at the same time, we're also familiar with another quotient by t squared plus 1. And this is what we used to call, what was the other name that we had for this? Q adjoin I, the Gaussian rationals. And is that a field or is that not a field? We devoted some time in chapter one to justifying to ourselves why that was in fact a field. So what this pair of results is going to do is it's going to convince us why that wasn't an accident. It wasn't an accident because what's different about these two polynomials, t squared minus 4 and t squared plus 1? Their irreducibility is different. Which one is irreducible that we just uh, finished saying? The bottom one. t squared plus 1 is irreducible, which now, according to these two results, should guarantee that this quotient was a field. And how do we know t squared minus 4 is not irreducible? So yeah, one of the ways we could do it is get at the, the squared discriminant. And the squared discriminant, again, b squared minus 4ac all over a squared. Um, that's 16 <coughs> for this polynomial, which is a perfect square of a rational. But if we wanted to be even more explicit, to guarantee that t squared minus 4 is not irreducible, we just have to produce a factorization in which neither factor is a unit. What factorization does t squared minus 4 have? t plus 2, t minus 2. Yeah, difference of squares. t plus 2, t minus 2. And because each of those does not have degree 0, neither one is a unit. And therefore, this factorization counts in view of irreducibility. So the claim is that that's the big difference between these two quotient rings, is that one of the polynomials that generates the ideal we're quotienting by is irreducible, and therefore that quotient becomes a field. And in the other case, that was not irreducible, and it, uh, the quotient, therefore, is not a field. Um, so in fact, the statement in 157, even though I'm not asking you to prove this, but maybe we can think about it, the statement in 157 goes both ways. That not only do I get a field when I take a quotient by a maximal ideal, but also, um, if I take a quotient by any ideal and I get a field, then that ideal must have been maximal. So there is a complete link uh, between the maximality of an ideal and the field property of the quotient of the ring by that ideal. 